I was born in Morelos, Mexico, and at the age of four, in 1989, I immigrated to the United States alongside my parents and my younger sister. Yo buscaba darles una mejor vida a mis hijas, este, y la situación en México era muy difícil para mí. No puede uno realmente hacer muchas cosas como uno quisiera. Corre mucho riesgo la mujer de, de ser violada, de ser este, robada. Nos tomó como unas seis ocasiones. Since I was a little girl, my parents always taught me that I was not allowed to tell anyone that I was born in Mexico, um, just because somehow, I guess, saying you're Mexican, you know, equates to, to, to being undocumented in the United States. Ya el recuerdo desde pequeña era muy, muy tímida. Le decíamos que era la piglet de, de la casa, ¿no? O sea, siempre estaba temblando, siempre tenía mucho miedo. Y yo recuerdo que teníamos una, una alcancía que era como, les decía, que esa era la alcancía porque iban a ir al colegio. Eh, fue, era, básicamente yo entiendo que era simbólico, ¿no? O sea, pero ella siempre supo que tenía que ir a la universidad. Fue cuando fue que ella, te, te, en, el, en la high school, que ella tenía que empezar a aplicar para los colegios, ¿no? Ella, eh, cua, al momento de cuando llegamos a ese punto de, 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 la, de los documentos, y que le tuvimos que decir pues que no tenía documentos. Y yo recuerdo esa vez, yo la vi desbastada, ¿no? O sea, ella veía como que todo su mundo, todo su esfuerzo se, ve, se venía a la basura. Growing up undocumented in the United States brought a lot of anxiety. You know, I was never able to say to anyone. I was so afraid of what they would think of me, and I was afraid that they would think of me differently. Being detained or being deported or having my family be separated was a very real reality that I had to live every day. You know, just the fear that if my parents went out to the store, they might never come back. These are young people who study in our schools, they play in our neighborhoods, they're friends with our kids, they pledge allegiance to our flag. They are Americans in their heart, in their minds, in every single way but one, on paper. So when the California Dream Act and when DACA went into place and when I re received both, like both of them, I felt this sense of relief. When I was admitted to UCLA, you know, I, yeah, just like normalcy that I would finally be, be you know, like live the same experiences that like all other teenagers do in the United States. When I applied for for advanced parole, I you know I had the like the opportunity to to study abroad and to visit all of these countries in Europe that. As a child, it had always been my dream, but because I was undocumented, I, I never thought I would, you know, be able to step into the house of, like, into the, into the annex where Anne Frank hid during um, World War II. It is my honor to welcome you to UCLA's commencement weekend. Yael, y para mí es un gran orgullo que mi hija, pues, lo haya logrado, ¿no? Que mi hija haya podido ir a la, a la universidad, al colegio. What this UCLA diploma means to me is all of the challenges I had to overcome as, you know, not only Mexican, but as Latina and as a woman, um, but most importantly, as an undocumented person here in the United States. <laughs> Este ha sido un torneo que hicimos de... ¿Qué tienes? 
Era un amigo, un carnicero. Mm. Es que sus dos, sus hijos, mm. tuvo, tuvo cuates. Mm. Son sus hijos, sí. En Christmas, my grandmother would always get my sister and I really big presents. I remember just always being excited for when she, when she would come. So, tú te veniste, este fue en abril. Uh -huh. Cinco meses de ahí, ¿verdad? I'm here today to announce that the program known as DACA that was effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. The DACA program was implemented in 2012 and essentially provided a... I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. My current permit expires in a year in March of 2019. I felt a sense of desperation and anger and fear. It will be, from now on, America first. On December 5th, when she had to present herself to, to court, when she entered the building and she was in the bathroom, the ICE agents literally grabbed her as she was exiting the bathroom. Eh, la sacaron inmediatamente a Tijuana y este y ya no tuvimos oportunidad de, de volver a ver a mi mamá. Leaving is the easy part, but we don't have visas to be able to enter. Fue algo, repito, fue fue muy rápido. When my grandmother was deported, like a small part of me had just been taken away. It was really difficult to be able to be in La Puente because that's where she lived. But we're taking people out of the country. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. These aren't people. These are animals. When my parents and I first arrived to the United States, she was, um, you know, what one of our greatest Um, you know, like pillars of support because, you know, she allowed us to live in her house and she, she helped my parents financially. And so watching this woman who had helped raise me was, was really difficult, um, right? Just because, I mean, so many deportations are happening, right? Like all at once and on, you know, any given day, like any person from any family is deported. But I think that It's really difficult to comprehend how that makes you feel when, like, we're all numbers in this situation. And so when, when it really hits you close to home, like my grandmother being taken from me, it makes the, the undocumented experience, like, so much more difficult and so much more real. Dios la bendiga, abuelita, y Dios quiera que el próximo año sí podamos estar eh, reunidos y en, toda, en, esa, en, en medio de toda esa gran familia que tenemos allá. Dios mediante el próximo año así sea. Gracias abuelita, un beso. Te quiero mucho. I grew up in the United States and this is what I call my home and you know I don't see myself living in, in any other place. 